Okay, we're gonna finish out go-go here after the bath. We're gonna just touch up everything. Got some paws to touch up and do our nails. She's not 100% blow dried. I just didn't want to, she's a senior, so I didn't want to overdo it. I'm just gonna come in and touch up just some areas here. I'm not worried about the moles, um, but there any unevenness from getting the coat nice and clean. I'm just gonna touch up some of that stuff. Uh, as you know, if you've been watching a while, as you groom seniors, I mean, not that it's like, who cares, but it's like if it's little minor stuff, you know, like blow drying her all the way, or you're just going to skip a couple things, not skip, but just take it easy and just end sooner, like more, I would normally blow dry her pretty uh, dry, but she's tiny bit damp, she's just older, so I don't want to have to subdue her to the blow dryer, um, longer I just I don't know just you'll get the feeling you know you'll you'll have a feeling like ah this is kind of too much you don't want to overdo it on a senior the grooming process is already pretty um, stressful in the sense of like it's like an older person running 10 miles if they don't run every day you know and so you just don't want to overdo it And it doesn't have to be perfect on a senior. That's my, my opinion. Um, you want it to be good. You don't want it to be bad unless it's an aggressive senior and you've seen those. I mean, just get the hair off, especially if it's matted, but... You don't want it to be bad, but you don't have to... It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, she's older. Come on, people. Sometimes sitting is perfect to get this under this, that little area right there. Although, one of my pet peeves is a dog that sits the whole time. I hate those situations. It's too much um, tart on your hands. Still, again, watching these moles, you know, really taking a look at the moles that we're working with. Sometimes you're gonna have to go forward or backwards with the clippers. You're gonna be, you're gonna decide based off of, you know, what you're working with. Up under there, down there, and then by the nose. And it depends on what gar or what blade you have on too. Come on, come on, she's fighting me. Stop. It's not that bad, we're almost done. She doesn't want to keep her head up. Keep her head up. <laughs> I'm gonna come back seven reverse on her pet or her feet here, so I can just scissor a little less. Every dog's different, so in this case, I think that the bushiness, that seven will be fine. I know, you don't like it. Up, oh, up, oh, stand up. But I had already blow dried the hair backwards, so it's all standing up for me. Watch your moles. Seven reverse is kind of like a 10 down. So I'm just kind of cleaning up some other stuff I see. Uh -uh -uh. No, she doesn't like it. Uh, most Cocker Spaniels do bite, uh, especially when they get older. So always have your uh -uh -uh -uh. be ready for it. Don't move. 
don't bite me. She doesn't, she's not standing up completely. She's kind of pushing down. You see? Okay, at this point I want to uh, trim her feet, but I like my table really clean so I can see what I'm working with, what hair is real, really still there and what's not, so <laughs> clean all this hair off. Come on now. Now I need you to move forward. Dogs are very smart. Like the way I talk to the dogs is like I talk to what I need them to do. You know, they know, especially if you've been grooming them for years, they know. They know what's going on. You can love them, but you can also be a leader. And when you need to do work, work is work. You know what I mean? And that's my opinion. That's how I like to work. Because I want this dog done in an hour. I don't want to sit here for two hours um, going back and forth. You can use your scissors to just move up the hair that you need to get out of there. Move it up and down so you can see what's uneven and loose. Brush the hair backwards if it looks like there's um, hair you need to get out of there. Brush it backwards. Get in there, pull that hair out like that. Push it up so you can really trim it. Everyone does like different things, so this is what I like. I like the feet real nice and cleaned up. That's uh, uh, don't get mad. I know it tickles. Some dogs, if it tickles, they don't know what to do, so they act out in uh, anger, which is fine. Just be aware. I know it. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Come on, go, go. little nub back there to be nice and cleaned up too. I don't like any hair around it. So I always turn that up pretty good. No, no, no. I feel like also when you're firm, uh, they listen pretty well. Sometimes they don't. And then you have to go turn it into the whole little, hi baby, you gotta do that. Every dog's different. And every person's different for that matter. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, over here. coming around with uh, my six inch scissors, I believe, five inch, and just going around. If you put your two fingers here, you'll be able, you know, where the skin ends so that you never cut the skin, that'll help. 
lots of groomers um, that I've seen their work have cut a lot of ears, so I, I'm not really one to cut ears. It's just never, like, accidentally cut the ear. It's just not my thing. Never had a problem with that. You can smell the ear infection. It's very maroon in there. Maroon is, it's very maroon. There's a bun bunch of stuff in there. Ugh. We're going to do that last. Um, the hesitation she's given me on pulling when I've trimmed her feet has made me want to just make sure I'm cool with the toenail trimming today. So, we're going to use an, ah, ah, we're going to use muzzle just to protect myself. Although they can still bite through the muzzle. Mm -mm, no, 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 stand up. Stand up. You're good. We're good. We're almost done. We're almost done. We are almost done. Go, go. Come on now. Doing great. Come on. Come on. She's uh, pushing back, pulling. I mean, things you can't see in a video that make grooming hard. She's doing all those things right now. Uh -uh. Stop. Stop. Pull, pulling. I, uh, pulling her hand from me. Hey, hey. That's enough. That's enough. We have just a little bit more to go. There we go. See? Just a little bit more. One more. See? There we go. Good, 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 good. Good. All done. All done. Okay. Be stern, you know. Just be stern and hurry up. Okay. For the groomer. Uh -huh. Now, ears. Okay, so we're going to clean her ears, and I know they're infected, so I'm going to use a flushing agent as well called Malacetic Otic. So I'm going to clean the ears first. There's moles in the ears. I mean, she's really getting old. Those are some features that do start to happen to Cocker Spaniels especially, but my Shih Tzu, who passed away, Sui. He had lots of moles, and Duke had some moles, but not as much as Sui. So this is a basic ear cleaner, pet, pet ear cleaner. And I'm going to clean it with that first, and then I'm going to flush. Flushing means literally flushing with malacetic on it. But once you flush, she's going to shake her head a lot, so I'm going to get um, my before-after picture now, before that. That way, she's not shaking her head for that last picture. Go, go. Go, go. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to flush her ears. Pour it. I pour it from the top down. That way, um, it doesn't suck back into the bottle. And I'll hold it up for a few seconds here. You want it to get inside the ear canal. Hey, here we go. And this is our groom. Thanks for watching my favorite groomer. Check us out and support us for all the videos so that more can come out. Thank you.